Hello everyone, good evening. Good evening, God bless you all. Depends on the time you are watching me. Good evening, good day to you all. Depends on the time you are watching me. You are all welcome on board. Happy new month, happy Sunday to you all. Happy new month, happy Sunday to you all. You are all welcome on board in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's come together. Fellowship to the glory of God. It's another day again. Let's come together and give thanks to God. Let's appreciate Him with the gift of life. For making us to see today is not by our power, it's by His grace. We are all alive today. Let's give God the praise or the honor, adoration. Hallelujah. You are all welcome on board in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you all, God bless you all. Share this video to your friends. Let's come together, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. Share this video. Share this video to your friends. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are all welcome once again. You are all welcome. Thank you all for being on board. Thank you all for sharing my video, for the like, for the love. May God Almighty continue to bless you all in Jesus' name. I appreciate you all. Hallelujah. Thank you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you, sister. I will say you are on board. Glory. You are welcome on board. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming on board. Hallelujah. It's your sister, your daughter, your girl, Veronica. I come online every Sunday, 7 p.m. It's a word of encouragement for each and every one of us, the way we live our life, so that our life not remain the same. So, brothers and sisters, let's encourage one or two persons out there, wherever you are. Try to encourage one or two persons out there, correct one or two persons out there with love. And God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Good evening. God bless you. Oh, happy Sunday and happy new month to you all. Hallelujah. I will not be taking too much of your time today. Please share this video to your friends, to your loved one. Hallelujah. Amen. So before we go to the topic of today, we have to praise our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Ikpomo <laughs> Sak ba em in a de ma wudyon baba o Wak ba em in a da ma wudyon baba jesu Wak ba em in a da ma wudyon baba o Wak ba em in a de ma wudyon baba jesu Ma wo sa na yi me na yi me wo Hik ba mi jesu na la mi yeke Sak ba em in a da me wudyon baba o Wak ba em in a de ma wu baba jesu Hallelujah, hallelujah Give praise to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ For seeing today is not by your power but by the grace of God You are our life today Appreciate God for all he have done in your life Brothers and sisters, we are still going to take another praise Hallelujah, amen Thy Lord that never change. Let me hide in you. Let me hide in you. In you, 
there is power, thy Lord I never change. Let me hide in you, let me hide in you. In you there is power, thy Lord I never change. Let me hide in you, let me hide in you. In you there is power, thy Lord has never changed. Let me hide in you, O oh Lord, let me hide in you. In you there is power, thy Lord has never changed. Let me hide in you, let me hide in you. In you there is power. The Lord that never changed. Let us hide in our Lord Jesus Christ. In Him there is power. Hallelujah. There is power in the Lord Jesus Christ. So believe in Him and have faith in Him. Whatever you are be believing Him for, it shall come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. This is our brothers and sisters. Let's begin to give praise to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to appreciate Him in all He has done in your life. Begin to give thanks to His holy name for bringing you to His presence this hour. It's not by your power, but by His grace you are alive today, head and son. Begin to give praise to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord King of Glory. Begin to say thank you, Lord Jesus, for all He has done in your life. For His protection, for His provision, for His guidance upon your life. Begin to give glory to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we appreciate you. We give you all the praise, all the honor, adoration. We thank you for what you have done and the more you are seeing to do. We thank you for making us to see this beautiful day, Lord King of Glory. For making us to see this new month, oh Lord. Father, we give you all the praise. Father, adoration to your holy name, oh Lord God. Not because we are holy, nor righteous, because of your mercy you have kept us to this month, oh Lord God. Lord, may your goodness and mercy to follow us, oh Lord God. May your protection come to rest upon our life, all the days of our life, in our going out and coming in, in the mighty name name of Jesus. Father, King of glory, if we say we have not sinned, we have deceived ourselves. There is no truth in us. Father, in any way we have sinned, we ask for your mercy this hour. Have mercy upon us, O Lord God. Forgive us our sin tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are here again, Lord King of glory. Because your word said where two or three of our gather here in their midst, we pray that your presence come and be in our midst today, O Lord God. Come and be in our midst, O Lord King of glory. Let us not do this on our own. In the mighty name of Jesus. As we have gather Lord God King of glory. Let us not gather in vain. Lord God that we are about to hear your word. Come and give us a listening ear. Let us have a place in our heart O oh Lord as your word comfort we have a place to dwell in our heart. As your word will come will not be the hearer alone but the doer of faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord we pray that it draw us closer to you. Help us to know you more better. In the mighty name of Jesus. King of glory the I am that I am. As men that will watch this video. As men that will be online now. As men that will watch later on. Lord God, I cover each and every one of our life with the blood of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that our, our life will never remain the same. In the mighty name of Jesus, King of glory, I am that I am. You know each and every one of our heart desire. Lord God, I pray that we meet each and every one of our heart desire. In the mighty name of Jesus, above all, we pray, Lord King of glory, let your protection rest upon our life. Continue to draw us closer to you. Continue to help us to know you more and more. Continue to make us to put your word into practice in our life so that our life not remain the same. Have your way in our life, O oh Lord God. Let only your, your will be done in our life. And let only you your will be done today in this fellowship in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the holy name. May your name be praised, O oh Lord God. Have your will, Lord God. Let us all have cause to say thank you at the end of the service of today, Lord King of Glory. May your name be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. I have no power of my own. I humble myself before you. Lord God, may you take us to control. At the end, your name be praised. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you all. You are all welcome on board. Good evening, brother. A cousin, you are welcome on board. Brother, sister, Swiss Golden, God bless you. You are all welcome on board in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. So our today's topic is what is marriage? Hallelujah. That is today's topic. Amen. We are going to be studying what is marriage. What is the meaning of marriage? Hallelujah. Amen. So many don't know the meaning of marriage. So many get into marriage. They, they get married. They don't know the meaning of marriage. So today we are going to be studying 
marriage hallelujah marriage is very important in the life of a man and a woman we need to know the meaning so that it can function so that it can work so that it can be successful so that we can have a successful marriage so we need to know what is marriage many go into it they don't know the meaning of it hallelujah so number one i'm going to be telling us the meaning of marriage marriage is is two becoming one hallelujah when two come together and become one man and woman coming together to become one they become husband and wife hallelujah that is marriage the two people become one flesh they become one flesh they are two this man this woman that but, but now they will become one flesh hallelujah they are not two anymore they become one praise the lord that is when they are married they will become one so many don't know the meaning of marriage when they are married they will still become two they are still like two they're not like one so it's supposed to be one it should be one not two the both need to work together because they are now one hallelujah so we are going to be taking our bible verse two brothers and sisters god bless you all for being on board share this video to your friends to your loved one so as we read on please have your bible also so that you can read along with me hallelujah so first uh, verse we are taking here is taken from the book of genesis 2 23 genesis 2 23 so i read say this is now bone of my bone flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman for she was taken out of man hallelujah married to become one the bible tells us the woman is the bone of your bone is the flesh of your flesh because she was taken out of man so you see when you join together you are now one you're supposed to know he's now your bone of your body flesh of your flesh you need to take care of your bone you need to take care of your flesh you need to take care of your wife as yourself you need to take care of your husband as yourself because you both are now one hallelujah Amen. Marriage is a long life covenant. It's a long term covenant. When you are marrying, you are getting married. You know that you are taking a long term covenant. Long life covenant. Not short term. It's a long one. But so many don't know the meaning today. They take the covenant, they break the covenant. Hallelujah. Before you take any covenant, you need to know what you are taking. You need to know the meaning, the precaution of what you are taking. You need to understand it. You don't just jump into it. That's why so many today, they don't know the meaning of marriage. They jump into it and jump out. Hallelujah. They don't know the meaning. So many things happening today because they, the many don't understand the meaning of marriage. When you marry, you are now become one. You are two better. Now you are one. You need to protect each other. You need to care for each other. You need to love each other. There's so many things happening today. But the name of marriage, there's no that care, no love, no protection. But they call it marriage. bone of your bone flesh of your flesh you don't know how to protect him or her hallelujah amen let's read on he said this marital covenant is lifelong commitment it's a long commitment you need to be committed to it you need to be committed it's a long-term commitment not half term, long term 
for a long time, you need to be committed. You need to check your mind. You need to know what you are going into before you take any comment, any covenant. Before you make an agreement of getting married, you need to be sure of yourself. Ready to stay. Not to jump in and jump out. Don't do things because people are doing it. People are getting married. You want to rush into it. At the end of the day, you rush out. You need to be careful. You need to be careful. Amen? In the book of Matthew 19, says, in the book of Matthew 19, verse 6, says, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Praise the Lord. Sometimes it's not man that is putting asunder. The both couple put asunder by themselves because they don't know what is married. They go into it. They jump into it. They put asunder by themselves. Because the time realize not the type of man she wants to marry to, she jump out. At the time the man will realize this is not the type of woman she wants to get married, he run away. We need to watch carefully before we do things. Don't rush into doing things. Don't rush to take decision. You need to watch the character, the way the, the way he or she behave. You need to understand each other. All these are marriage. Before you go into it, you need to understand each other. You need to know how to protect each other, love each other, care for each other. Don't just jump into it. Because the time you jump into it, you jump out. You have break that covenant. Before taking any covenant, before taking any agreement in anything you are doing, you need to think twice. Know what you are doing. If that is the right thing you are about to do. If it's the right, if that thing that you wish to do for yourself. If that is the thing you need for yourself, you need to check it out. You need to know, you need to be sure. There's so many today. They don't know all this meaning. Marriage is two becoming one. At the time they are married, they still do things like they are, they are different person, not, in, not one. They don't do things in common. They don't agree that they are one. Just doing things separately. Hallelujah. All these are what we need to understand before you go into any marriage. You need to know the meaning of it. You need to know all those things that you need to be doing when you are married. When you are married, what you need to do, you don't know that the lifestyle you lived before. Now it's two becoming one. Before it was one to be one. When you get married, it's not two to become one. So you are not doing things in common, doing things together. Take a decision together, agree together to do things. Plan it together. So you need to think before you get into that marriage. If it's somebody you will be able to plan with, to build with. If it's somebody that can protect you. So that you don't be the one to put asunder by yourself. Because the word of God says in the book of Matthew 19, 6, say, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So that you not be asunder by yourself. You not be the one to put the obstacle that make it not to work out anymore. So that you not be the one to break that covenant. Because the time you break the covenant, you will not be able to, to fulfill your commitment. It is no man that put asunder. It is you yourself. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother Sonny. You are welcome on board. It is not anybody that put asunder. It is you yourself. Because you never understand the person you are getting married to. You just look at those flashy things. You jump into it. You never know the character like that. Hallelujah. God bless you, sister. You are welcome on board. You don't look at the character, the way he behaves. 
If the type that lies, that, 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 that womanize, some don't care about all these things. All they know, all they care about is just that he have money. Some we walk, we just look at it. He's handsome. She's beautiful. Just jump into it. Forgetting that marriage is two to become one. At the time you jump into it, you see that you never, you never agree together because it's not your lifestyle. Or you jump into somebody that is smoking and you are not the type that smoke. How can it work together? It can never be the same. You can't agree. Telling lies. Prouding. What you are not, you say you are. When you marry to such woman or such man, you see that there will be problem. You need to wash all this character. Hallelujah. You need to wash all this character. Because the time you marry to somebody who is bragging, who don't have anything, just bragging, proud of anything, what she's known, what he's not, Who cannot control his temper? Who cannot control the ways he speak? The way she speak? At the time you get married, you cannot change anything. You can never change it because that is his way of life. That is her way of life. So you need to watch this so that you don't be the one to put asunder by yourself. Your character, if you don't, if the character didn't match each other, it can bring asunder. You will break the com commitment. You will not be able to finish the commitment. The covenant, the long-term covenant will not be long-term anymore. It will be short. Because there is no understanding. There is no understanding. You need to understand each other before you go into marriage. Because it's a long-term covenant. Long-term commitment, lifetime commitment. So you need to watch all these things. Not all that glitter is gold. Not because you see flashy things, you see beautiful, the beauty of the lady, the girl, the man, the Samson, all those things. Beauty will never put anything on your table. Beauty will never give you the happiness because at the time you bring out those character, those devilish character, you see the beauty will never be able to cover it. You will never be able to, you cannot bear it. That, that character, that devilish character, dirty character, the beauty will not be able to cover it. At the time you bring out those character, you can never tolerate, you can't longer tolerate it anymore. You see that you'll be the one to put asunder by yourself, breaking up. Instead of you to watch the character, the behavior you're looking after, beauty, the wet, flash life. So we need to watch all this character before we go into marriage because it's two to become one. Study each other so you can be able to agree. When the time comes, when you are now one, you can agree together to do something together, you build together, you plan together, you suggest together because you are now one. But today, so many people that sunder by themselves because they can't be one. When this one we say A, the other one we say no, it's B. It must be B. It must be plan B. We can't use plan A. We have to use plan B. So you see the argument is there already. There are no one. They disagree. We are going to read the verse that will say so. When two disagree, they can't, there's nothing that can work. Let's read on. Amen. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. The husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. But so many have turned it upside down today. They have turned it in the way, in the other way around. He said, "Husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church." Husband is the head of the wife. The women need to respect their husband because he's the head of the house. And the men need to do their duty, their responsibility. They need to fulfill all their responsibility. But sometimes it's vice versa. He said of the man to be the head of the house. You see some home, the woman is not the head of the house. He will not be 
Wife, the head of the house. Turn it upside down. They turn it upside down. Hallelujah. They turn it upside down. They turn the verse upside down. Wife is not the head of the house. Why the, 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 the husband will not be the wife? You see? Can this work fine? It can never work fine. Because that is not the way the word of God says say it. That is not the way. Some men face to carry on their responsibility. God bless you, sister. Maybe you are welcome on board. Some face to, to fulfill their responsibility as man. Then because the woman is not the one responsible, responsible for the duty, he will not be the man. He will not be the head. Hallelujah. He will not be the head. Turning it upside down. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us read the book of Ephesians 5, 23. Ephesians 5, 23. Amen. Let's read. Ephesians 5, 23 to 25. I read. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ the head of the church. Let's read on. His body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband. In everything, husband, love your wife. For husband, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and give himself for her. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. How many fulfill this today? Amen. How many fulfill it to submit? How many? So many don't submit. In behavior, in respect, in manner, in anything concerning woman to submit to, be, to the husband, many are zero today. But we all go to church. We go to church. The same thing to the men. He said, men love your wives as Christ loved the church. How many fulfill that part today? Some and some not. Hallelujah. When you both can play your own role, you see the marriage will be sweet. You will have a successful marriage. When you play your part, the other one play his part. There will be a successful marriage. There will be peaceful marriage. There will be peace in that home. By the time when you say two coming together become one, at the time they are one, but there's no no res no respect, no regard, no submissive, no there's no submission, nothing. How will the husband love the wife? How? You cannot love the wife. Sometimes the man will be the one to prove rude, stubborn, no regard, no respect for the wife, no, no, no sign of love. How will the woman be submissive? If you want to have a successful marriage, just obey to the word of God. Obey to the word of God. Apply it in your life. Apply it. You have a successful marriage. Because first, when you know that marriage is two becoming one and they are, it is two to become one, and they are now one, they are one flesh, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Somebody you call your wife is a bone of your body, flesh of your flesh. If you have love for her, you don't beat her, you don't hurt her. 
you will not condemn her. You see? But because that love is not there, you can do all sorts of things. The same thing to the woman. When you obey to the word of God, you'll be able to be submissive. Because you are just obeying the word of God. That is the command of God. It's only the word of God that will get everybody. Amen? There is no love. So many claim they love their wife. They tell lies. They womanize. They hurt them. The same thing to the woman. Disrespectful, fighting, laying a uh, curse. Hmm? So we just need the word of God to guide us. God bless you, brother. Brad, you are welcome on board. We need the word of God to have a peaceful marriage, a successful marriage. You need to obey to the word of God. Simple. That's the only way. There's no other solution. Just obey to the word of God. Put it into practice in your life. Apply it. Because it's, you are obeying to God. As long as you are obeying the word of God, you become a responsible woman and a responsible man. You will know your duty as the husband, that husband is the head of the house. Also, the woman will be submissive when you obey to the word of God. Amen? Let us continue. Let's continue. Prova. We are going to read the book of um, Prova. Hallelujah. Let me read. Prova. I say. He who find a wife find what is good and receive favor from the Lord. Hallelujah. He who find a wife find what is good. That is the word of God. In the book of Proverbs 18.22. Thank you all for watching. God bless you. Hallelujah. He said, he who find a wife Find good thing. He find what is good. God bless you, Sister Vieja. Welcome on board. He find what is good. Hallelujah. Amen. By the time you rush into it, by the time you marry because of beauty, at the time you get into that home, now you are not living together. You start seeing all those character you didn't know about. It will not be good anymore. It will not be bad. Because you didn't watch carefully before you rush into that marriage. Instead of finding a wife, as the word of God says in the book of Proverbs, that you ever find a wife, find a good thing, it will not become bad. Because you didn't watch carefully. Because you didn't watch the character, the behavior. You were all looking at beauty. At the time, you made that mistake. You see that the commitment, you can no longer fulfill it. The covenant will be broken. Who has put us under? It's not mine anymore. It's you yourself. That's how so many today. They put us under by themselves because they are lack of uh, knowledge. That is, they don't obey to the word of God. No man put us under for them. It is them themselves. Because they don't understand the meaning of marriage. The covenant they are taking. The commitment they are they negate themselves. They don't understand it. So they easily break the commitment, break the covenant. Hmm? My mates are getting married. You want to jump into it. People are getting married. You want to jump into it. Watch carefully. Don't rush in any. Don't rush. Watch. Amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew 18, 19. Matthew 18, 19. Amen. 
Let me read. Matthew 18, 19. Okay. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Right? Yeah. So I read. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Hallelujah. That is God. As you know that marriage is to becoming one, so you need to agree. You need to agree together in anything you are doing, in taking decision, in any plan, you need to agree. That is when it can work. As the word of God say, he said, if two agreed on earth and pray for one thing, it shall be done by my heavenly father. Our heavenly father will surely do it. We answer it. Two coming together to pray. The same thing as husband and wife. When two coming together, they are not one as a husband and wife. So they need to agree in anything they are doing. You don't need to take decision on your own. You don't need to take decision on the behalf of your wife or your husband. Anything you are about, you, you are going to do, you need to decide together. You need to conclude together. You need to agree together. Not because say you are the man, you just take decision. It's not fair. You are not obeying to the word of God. Amen. You, you, you need to agree. That is where there will be peace. That is where you will not put asunder by yourself. At the time you don't agree, you are already putting asunder in that marriage. You are already breaking those covenant gradually. You are breaking it up. You need to agree. You need to seek uh, 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 no permission. You need to just agree before you do anything together. You need to don't you don't take decision by yourself because you are no longer one. You are now you are no longer one on your own because it's not two becoming one. So you can't do things on your own. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can become you can't do things just like that. But like today, many do things like that. They take decisions on their own. They run things by themselves. They don't even say anything. Taking advantage and the man of the house. But why do you get married? You are the man of the house. You can do everything. You don't need to marry. Then become do everything on your own. That's why you get you get married. You are now two becoming one. So you can't longer do things on your own. Just that, just like that. No. But today many still do it. At the time you now have a broken marriage, you are the one that put asunder by yourself. Yeah. So all these things are. Things we need to know, we need to learn all these things before taking any covenant of getting into marriage. You need to know that you are you are committing yourself to some certain things. I these are things you need to be doing. It is must, you must do it that way. So if you are not ready, you stay on your own, stay on your lane. But today, many get into marriage, they don't know all these things, they take decision by themselves. Because you are the man. They take decision by themselves. You are the woman because you are not the head. You are not taking control of everything in the house. You can do anything you like. It is wrong in the sight of God. Amen? Let's read the book of Amos 3.3. Amos 3.3. If you have your Bible there, you can also turn your Bible with me. Let's go to Amos 3, 3. Okay, I read. Amos 3, 3. He said, do two work together unless they have agreement to do so? Hallelujah. That is the question. 
Amos 3, 3 asking us, say, do two work together or less they agree to do so? Can this work to can this work if you don't agree to do thing together? It will not work. Maybe one will say we are going to use this plan B. The other one will say no, 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 we are not doing that one. It's A. We have to we have to do it like this. The other one will say no, no, no. It's, it must be B. No agreement to come to conclusion to accept to one. How can it work out? It will not work. It just only argument, argument, and it will end up like that argument without doing nothing. That's the book of Amos Tiri Tiri. He said, can two work together without agreeing, agreeing to do so? No. If we are going to somewhere and I want to go, you are telling me, escort me, follow me to so-so place. If I don't agree with you, I can't go. I will say no, let's go to this side first. You will say no, is this first? You say that we not, if we don't come to agreement, we can't go together. So it, it will just be like scatter. You are your order don't be on it. So, so the thing cannot work again. But when two come together in agreement and do things, it will move for that the thing will work easily. It will grow fast. One person that is doing something with two or three people doing it together, will it be the same? It cannot be the same. When two bring their ideas together and agree to do something, you see that there will be solution. That's what this place is telling us. It doesn't matter who brings the idea. It does not matter who brings the plan. Just think and see if that plan if that idea is reasonable if it's wise if it's something to do it's okay if it's okay then do it not that say ah huh? it's not my, my wife not tell me what to do as some men will say my wife will tell me what to do is she that say so because is she that say it i'm not doing it so you see disagreeing you don't move forward you remain there Everybody is not the same. There are way God bless every everyone. There are way God gift God give to everyone. The gift of God concerning you, concerning me, is not the same. Your wisdom, my wisdom, not the same. Your knowledge, not the same. So even if it's your wife that brings that idea, don't commonalize it. Don't say because it's the wife, it's not you that bring the idea. That's what some men will do. Some women the same thing. If he says no me that say it, so you just be the idea like that. You know, I didn't contribute to it, so no like that. Do it to this my way, this way, this one. Hmm? Without agreeing together, you can't move to anywhere, you can't move forward. There will never be a peace without coming to agreement in the marriage. Hallelujah. God bless you, sister. You are your welcome on board. Thank you for watching. God bless you all in Jesus' name. We are coming together to, to, to that is agree together to become one. You cannot move. What prayer will you pray when you don't agree with your wife at home? You have a wife, no agreement, disagreement. You're praying for nothing. God can answer such prayer. Hmm? This one say B, the other one will say C. No agreement and there will never be peace except you agree that's where you can move that's where you can go straight to where you are going that is the book of Amos asking us that question that is the truth if one don't agree you see arguments you just end up doing nothing hmm? okay so let us read the book of uh, Corinthians, first Corinthians, first Corinthians, first Corinthians 7, 3 and 4. Amen. First Corinthians 7, 3 and 4. Let me open it. First Corinthians 7. City. 
Hallelujah. First Corinthians 7, 3 and 4, I read. He said, the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife. Amen. Then, and likewise, the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yield to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but ye to his own wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sister. God bless you for watching. Hallelujah. The wife does not have authority over her own body. So the husband. But sometimes today you see so many women when the husband need them, they say, no, no, leave, leave me, leave me, leave me. The same thing with some men. Stay in the same house, quarreling for days, turning that is facing each other with back when they are sleeping. This one will face the other side, the other one face the other side. What what are you practicing? God bless you, ma. God bless you. Thank you for watching. God bless you. What are you practicing? You go to church. Hmm? You cannot settle things by yourself. So many things, so many people don't understand what is marriage. When they get into marriage, they still carry their problem to their father to solve it for them, to their sister. If you are not grown enough to marry, then stay. But you to have that maturity before you go into marriage. If you cannot handle things by yourself, you are not mature enough to marry. You are not mature enough to get married, to have a wife or to marry. You can't handle things by yourself. Why will you leave your father's house and your mother's house to go and join somebody you don't know before? You need to be capable that you can be able to handle it. You can be able to stand it. You have studied the character. It's somebody you can live with. You can cope with. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. Eddie, you are welcome aboard. Amen? So let us not be asunder by ourselves. It is good we know the meanings of marriage. The importance of it. Amen? We all need each other. So the man need the wife, also the wife need the husband. So it's vice versa. It's 50-50. You have a role to play as the man. Also the woman have a role to play. Hallelujah. But the word of God is what we guide each and every one of us. So we can have a peaceful marriage. So you can have a successful marriage. It's the word of God. That's got everyone life. The word of God. In anything you are doing in life, it's the word of God. When you are able, when you are obedient to the word of God, it makes things to be easy for you. Amen. It makes things to be easy for you. When you see the character of the person you are about to marry, you call it your fiancé and you are having disagreement when you are about to do something, sometimes take decisions just like that, that is when you need to study all those things. To know if this is somebody you can move with, you can be able to stay with. Not that you say it will change later. I can change him. When this, the line is not the same line with you, you, take, you are saying you can change him. How can you change him? He's already addicted to it. That is his habit or a habit. How can you change that habit? He's already in her blood or he's in blood. Hmm? It's agreement. You need to know that when you are not one, you need to have agreement. You can't be one when there is no agreement. So it's already division. Division is already there. You can't say you are married. There's no agreement. You don't agree in anything. No agreement. There is already division. It's going to be hard before you walk out. 
It's going to be hard. That division must always bring misunderstanding. So that's what you need to study at the beginning. Not when you are inside the marriage, you are not struggling with it. So many jump into marriage and jump out. They don't study, they don't watch. Hmm? We need to be careful in anything we are doing. In any decision we are taking, we need to be wise. We need to think twice. Amen? We need to think twice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We need to think twice before we take any decision. So many destroy their home by themselves. They destroy with different things. Some destroy it with temper. Some destroy it with womanizer. Some destroy it with pride. Some destroy it with lies. Who is the person that put that sometimes? It's not nobody. Just obedient to the word of God. You can be able to overcome all these things. Amen? You will be able to overcome all these things. It's a word of encouragement on your sister, Veronica. So many don't understand the meaning of marriage. So if you are there, brothers and sisters, you are young, you are about to get married, you, are, you need to think twice, you need to study the person, you need to understand the person you are getting to, you are getting married to because it's not just a short term, it's a long term covenant. It's a long term covenant. It's a long commitment, long time commitment you are committing yourself to. So you need to study those characters, attitude, the behavior. Hmm? If it is, if it is the one you can cope with before you take that covenant. If not, you break out. So let it be the one you can cope with. Not that uh, we change later. It's too fine. This guy is too fine. This man is too handsome. You want to eat handsome or beauty? Not that one you will look. Look to the attitude. Not the beauty. Not the handsome. Not the height. Hmm? When you see the character is not right, you just don't have anything to do with it. Don't say we, we can manage it. You will help him to change. You will help her to change. It will worsen everything. It will never come away. So that's the little encouraging word I have today. Advice I have today. So keep on praying. And don't rush in any decision. It is not late. Anything you are, they don't say it's too late now. It's never late. Pray. God will give you your, your own heart desire. Whatever you desire that you want. The desire that you want. God will grant it for you. So be patient and pray. So not because you are rushing. People are getting married. People just rush because of people. And take the wrong one. No. Be patient. In anything you are doing. Be patient and be prayerful. So that you choose where. So that you don't make a wrong decision. Hmm? Not when you run into it and you get you jump out. Okay? So that is the word I have for every one of us today. I appreciate you all for watching, for being on board, for your like, for your love, for sharing the video. May God bless and reward you all in Jesus' name. I also thank you all for subscribing to my YouTube channel. As men that are subscribed, may God bless you all. As men that have not subscribed, also may God Almighty bless you all in Jesus' name. I have my YouTube channel, which is Veronica TV. If you have not subscribed, brothers and sisters, help your sister and subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and also press the notification button so that when I upload any video, you can also watch. Amen. We are just all common YouTuber. We are growing gradually. So subscribe to my YouTube channel, brothers and sisters. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. It's Veronica TV. Capital letter V E R O N I C A. Then capital letter T V. That is my name. My picture is also there in my channel. Veronica TV. God bless you all and I appreciate you all for subscription in my YouTube channel. For sharing my video in my Facebook.
for your comment, for your like, for the love. I appreciate you all. May God bless and reward you all in Jesus' name. It's a word of encouragement. I come online every Sunday, 7 p.m. to encourage ourselves with the word of God so that our life don't remain the same. Amen? So, this is the little I have today. I pray the Lord God Almighty will help us to put his word into practice in our life. To help us to understand the meaning of marriage so that we don't break the covenant. So that we don't break the commitment. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord God will give us the spirit of humbleness. To be submissive to our wife. For our husband to be responsible to do their marital duty. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God have your way Lord King of glory. Let us not turn your word upside down. O oh, Lord King of glory. Help us to be obedient child. Let us be the one to put your word into practice in our life. So that our life not remains. May they say, have your way in our life. Let only your way be done in our life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. We bless your holy name, O Lord God. As men that continue to watch this video, may our life not remain the same. We cover each and every one of our life with the blood of Jesus. As you are make God to see this new month, may your protection come to rest upon our life. In our going out and coming in. As men that will go out tomorrow, Lord God, may your protection be with them. Guide and protect them, O Lord God. Premature death and sickness will not be their portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. This difficult test, Lord God, may you see us all through. And God bless you all in Jesus' name. i see you guys again on Sunday, 7 p.m. Thank you all for watching. And bye-bye for now. Hallelujah.